What is up everybody? Welcome back to the show. Right now we are in the middle of photo assignment number six, which is photo sequences. There's been a few submissions so far, but this is a tougher assignment and I want to talk about that some more today. This is very different than the other stuff that we've done. The last photo assignment was called red and red is a very interpretive subjective term. You can kind of interpret that how you want and it works. This assignment is very different because it deals with conceptual photography and so I want to talk about that today. I am going to share a couple entries for photo assignments that have come in so far that I think are particularly good. And I want to walk you through the process of actually doing one of these. Someone asked me in a comment off the last video if I would show my process and how I work. And so I'm going to share a little bit of that with you today. So let's first of all talk about photo sequences and conceptual photography. In the last video, one of the photographers that I used to illustrate this idea of the photo sequence was a gentleman named Dwayne Michaels, who is an incredible photographer. He is known as a conceptual photographer. This is a movement of art that started in New York really around the 1960s, still continues today. But what is conceptual photography? What does that mean? Obviously there's a concept, but what does that mean beyond that? And really it's quite simple. All it means is there's an idea that permeates. And in the idea of conceptual photography, it's something that outweighs any of the aesthetic choices, but you know, you can have both if you want, but it means there is a solid idea that functions to give continuity to the work of art, or in this case, the sequence of photographs. And that idea, I believe, works best when you can introduce some kind of element of surprise, something that is unexpected. That's what ends up giving it a lift. Sometimes this can be humorous, sometimes it can be serious, but it's something that is unexpected. So for instance, if we look back at one of the photo sequences that I showed you last week, just to remind you, this is a photo sequence of Dwayne Michaels and a friend of his eating at a diner. And it's a fairly mundane thing. We've all done it. So what's different about this? Well, they're very animated. They start laughing. And at one point, Dwayne Michael starts talking and he starts boring his friend who falls asleep on the table. Eventually they get up and leave. I think that falling asleep on the table to introduce the idea of boredom is that element of the unexpected that gives that photo sequence a lift. Otherwise, it's not as exciting. It's not as interesting. And I think that's a really important function of this. And so this is something that's really important to consider. And I think the hardest place that people try to start is how do you come up with ideas? So where do ideas come from? This is the $6 million question. There are thousands of books written on this subject and there are thousands of gurus out there that want to tell you how creativity works and you follow them and their guidelines and all, you know. The only thing that I could tell you in all of my years of experience in this is the people that I've known and who I've worked with and what works for me is that everyone is different. And it's going to be different for everybody how they arrive at the end with an idea and how that comes to them. Now, I will say one thing that I have noticed that creativity is like going to the gym. When you're going to the gym regularly and you're exercising regularly, you feel good, it's satisfying to go, and you feel like you're in a good place. And the one or two weeks you stop exercising, it's really hard to get back into it and you have no strength. I think creativity works the same way in our own minds. When you're used to doing it and you're in that groove, it's going to flow more naturally than when you skip out on it for a couple weeks and then try and come back to it. So sometimes it's a matter of warming up, being patient with yourself and getting back into it. Now, I personally think that ideas are everywhere. And right now we're talking about a photo sequence. So a photo sequence has to have, generally speaking, some kind of action, something that happens. So what is that that happens? Now I'm gonna do one with you guys today. Right now it looks like rain outside, so that's probably not a good idea to wanna go shoot out there. So I'm going to stay in. So it's gonna be something that's a studio thing. So what do I have around the house that's an idea. And here's where it gets complicated because most people don't recognize ideas because they seem boring or mundane or just not interesting. And most of these are. So if I consider things that happen around the house, okay, setting the table, making dinner, doing the dishes, doing laundry, those are all mundane things. But what is that one element of surprise that could lift one of those, those, those actions into being something that is interesting? So for instance, I was thinking about this earlier. When I was in college, I can't tell you how many times I would buy a pair of jeans and then throw it in with a bunch of whites in my laundry and everything would come out blue. So there's an idea for maybe a photo sequence if you could photograph that right now. That's not one I'm willing to do today. Um, but I was thinking about this the other day and I, you know, I live in Texas and it's really hot here in the summer. And a couple of years ago, I went through this big phase where I would stay up late at night because it was cooler and inside and I did this botanical study. So I shot a lot of flowers, a lot of organic objects. And I thought, you know, based on the work that I did with that years ago, maybe there's something that I could do where, I don't know, the thing, first thing that comes to mind is like a time lapse of a flower blooming, right? 
Well, that's a little plain, but I can tell you one thing that happens around my house is my cat Judy eats flowers. In fact, we can't have nice things here. They always have to go up high and hidden because she will devour them when they're out. So maybe I could incorporate that and that could be my element of surprise. So with that in mind, let's take this to the next step and start sketching this out a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is sketch out my ideas onto a storyboard. Now, I have the worst drawing skills in the world, that is not the point. The reason that I'm doing this is one, for efficiency. I wanna make sure that I do this with as few images as possible, and I think this is really important. You see a lot of people try to do this with way too many images, and it's just too much to try to look at for the viewer, and so I want, really wanna be economical with this. If I can do it in four images, great, and if I need more frames, then I can add them on from here. The other thing I wanna to start to think about is just visually, do I have enough continuity going within the scene? And that's really important. So for instance, in my case, we're gonna start with the four squares here. And I want the first frame obviously to be the, the flower before it's bloomed. So it's just budding. So that's one thing I wanna go get when I do my props. I'm not gonna actually sit here and wait weeks on end for a flower to bloom. Um, we wanna get this done fairly quickly. So I wanna make sure I have enough to work with of the same flower that's not quite bloomed yet and bloomed. So first one, it's not blooming. The second one, I'm gonna go ahead and show that the flower is bloomed. And then the third frame I think is the place to introduce the cat, which is what this little bad drawing is supposed to be. That's supposed to be Judy, and she'll be devouring this somehow. I'll have to wait and see what that happens. That image will probably have to improvise a little bit because I'm dealing with a cat on this. And then finally, in the last image, um, I definitely want the flower petals, but I think we're gonna need the stem also to show. Now, what's interesting about sketching it out is I'm already starting to think in terms of what angle am I gonna shoot this from because I can't have those flower petals just floating in the air, obviously and I'm not shooting a bird's eye view of this, so probably what I'm gonna do is go at a 45 degree angle so I can cheat that a little bit and I can just have them scattered in the background so it looks fairly normal. So that's why I'm sketching this out. That's the only reason. So I start to think about those things a little bit, start to do some problem solving and make sure I'm being efficient. Now, let's go get some supplies. <music> For better or worse, I now have a photo sequence. Is it the greatest thing ever made? No, it. but it's a starting point and it's something that makes me want to work on it some more. I mean, what you saw was literally about an hour and a half and that included setting up my lights and actually going up to the store and getting some props and, and go and that was an hour and a half complete. And so I didn't spend a lot of time on that, but one thing that helped me was the fact that I sketched those ideas out beforehand. Now, I do want to say this, that a lot changed when I started photographing, when I got to the camera. I realized that the flowers that I got were really pretty small and I wish they were a little bit bigger. I also realized they were yellow and I envisioned them being on a white background and that didn't read, so I needed to change my background to black. So there's going to be a lot of decisions and a lot of things that you change when you move to the camera away from the stick figure stuff, but at least that gave me a concept and I knew what I was going for. And with conceptual art or conceptual photography, the whole aesthetic of that or the whole idea of that is that the concept is more important than the aesthetic. So once you get that and you're trying to get both, then it, it gives you a starting point is all I'm trying to say. And it gives you an idea. And I knew what that element of surprise was going to be. And that actually came off pretty easily. So I hope that helps you guys. I want to talk really quick about two submissions that I got this week that I think are really, really good. 
I'm gonna make one suggestion on each of these. So this is a little bit critiquey, but there is one thing that can be changed in each of these to take it from being really, really good to really exceptional. And so this first one was sent in by Jim Garlock. And I think it's fairly self-explanatory what this sequence is, but this is his son who was begging to eat a lemon. And much to his surprise, it was not nearly as tasty as he thought it was going to be, as you can see by the facial expressions. And I think this photo sequence is incredibly beautiful. It's a cute kid. It works really well. It's got dynamic emotions. It certainly has the element of surprise that's there, the unexpected, um, at least for the kid. I think it's great. My only complaint and my only criticism that I would give to this image is there are too many photos. You have to remember that when people experience a photograph, it's not like a movie. Even though we're doing a sequence and it starts to feel like a comic or a storyboard or something like that, people are going to give much more time and attention to a motion picture if they're into it than they are a group of photographs. And so I think right now there are too many images here and you could narrow it down to four of the best and tell the same story and do it much more effectively. And you also have to remember when you're giving people a bunch of images, that's a lot of information that somebody has to grok. And so I think it's really important to keep that as simple as possible. But anyway, other than that, I think this is outstanding. This is exactly what we're going for on this. Just make it fewer images. The second example I want to show you was submitted from a gentleman named Wu Ao, which I doubt is his real name, but I really love this image sequence. Now, unlike all the things we've been talking about where a conceptual photo sequence deals with some kind of action, this one does not. It has a concept, but it's not an action. There's nothing moving here. But you could probably tell what this is. This is basically the common thread here is the red chair in each image, but it's showing generations of a family. And I think the, the key image here is the one with the photo on it because you realize it's somebody who's not with us right now, but it shows that lineage. And I think this is really strong and I think it really dials in together. Now, the way you presented this was in this comic strip kind of format where it was columns and rows. I This is real nitpicky and you may have done that because you submitted it on social media and you're trying to maximize your space, which is fine. But I would display this all in one row. And it's, it's, it's just a few images. I would put them all in a horizontal row. I think they just need to be read like that. I think when you start making the eye wander, it takes away from the simplicity of this. But I think this is really beautiful. It's really well executed. And my God, what a great idea uh, doing something that's generational like that. I mean, that's a very different spin on all this concept stuff we've been talking about. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys. We're gonna take the entire month this month for this photo assignment. It's hard, I understand. It's probably a way of thinking and a style of photography that most of you guys are not used to dealing with and so we're going to take it slow. If you guys have any questions, please leave me a comment on this video. And as always, if you've enjoyed this, please remember to like it, share it, and subscribe to The Art of Photography. For more videos, I'll link up to the entire photo assignments playlist if you're just now coming into this and you have no idea what we're talking about. These are these little bi-weekly challenges that we do and I will link up some videos that you can watch here. Until the next one, I will see you guys then. Later.